for the invitation. Thank you very much TEDx for um, having the opportunity to talk here tonight, or well, tonight, today, <laughs> this morning. And um, actually I uh, called my talk today Envisioneering Ethiopia. Um, I am here a so-called scientific director uh, at the Ethiopian Institute of Architecture, Building Construction and City Development. That is a bigger network of right now eight uh, so-called institutes of technology which were founded approximately two years ago here in Ethiopia to enhance the quality of uh, teaching and research in the field of technology to educate uh, young uh, engineers, architects in, in that area and to increase the quality and the amount also um, of these youngsters here in Ethiopia. The reason why uh, maybe shows you this chart. Um, we always talk about the big boom in, uh, in China and in India uh, how uh, cities are growing, uh, we have the so-called Dubai boom going on. Forget all of that. This is not true. The biggest growth rate in urban settlements in the world right now, and this is a chart a couple of years ago, is right now in Africa. And you see it right now that we have a yearly growth rate of the urban settlements in Africa around 4.2%. Uh, a couple of years ago it was 3.97, the news numbers from the UN show 4.2%. That is incredible. And you also see the rest, North America, Europe, Europe is built, right? There is no more going on. And the main market right now and the main kind of concern we have are actually in Africa. So these institutes are meant to kind of scope with the new demands that Africa has. And you also see when we look at the case of Ethiopia that we actually have a demand. The UN prognostication says that in the year 2025, that's in 15 years from now, well, let's say tomorrow, tomorrow there are 35 additional, 35 million additional Ethiopians living in Ethiopia. That is an increase of almost 50% of the population in only 15 years. And the question, of course, that we have to face is in these 15 years, uh, additional 35 million people with basic needs for food with basic needs for water, for safety, and also, we should not forget that, for shelter are required. And the question is, how are we going to do this? There are a couple of possibilities. So, for example, this chart shows you that the build volume, when we talk about the last 10 years and looking into the future in 15 years, it would mean that Ethiopia in the next 15 years, we have more than to double the build volume as it is here today in Ethiopia more than to double it. Um, the question, of course, is which building materials are we using? This chart shows you, and I only have the chart right now up till 2005, shows you that um, Ethiopia is a country which is highly dependent on imports. So right now, in the year 2005, it was approximately one-fifth uh, was goods that was exported from Ethiopia, and five times more goods, machineries, services were imported into Ethiopia, five times more. Today we know that almost 80% of these imported goods in Ethiopia are meant for the construction sector. And this mostly is due to things like that. The goods which are imported mostly right now in Ethiopia are glass, are cement, steel and machineries, building machineries. And the reason why we need these, why we need all of this material down here in Ethiopia, is because that we design things like that. Right? Mostly our architects and designers in this country, engineers, are responsible that all of a sudden there's a huge demand for these kind of facades, buildings. You can imagine the structure behind a building like that is out of concrete. Then you have a steel facade and you have a glass or glass uh, kind of uh, glazing in front, which is, again, those three materials which Ethiopia does not have. Then you can imagine Addis Ababa right now, we are on a height approximately 2,400, 2,500 meters above sea level. We have a high radiation coming from the sun down to those glass facades. The buildings are heating up, and what we need inside right now are kind of cooling systems, HVAC systems. HVAC systems use a lot of energy. 
and you don't all know that something Ethiopia right now does not have is energy. Guys, all of that is because architects and engineers are not educated, right? We talked about education, educated enough to think about these things before. We have to educate people who know what they're doing. And we're trying right now at the Institute to kind of combine the research, the practice, and the teaching into projects which show architects and engineers how we can do it differently. So this is a project called ZUDU. It's a sustainable urban development unit to done together with the ETH in Zurich, the Federal Institute of Technology. And we're trying to promote right now the idea of rammed earth technology. Rammed earth technology is a very old technique. It's around for thousands of years. People used it also here in Ethiopia to build seven-story buildings, but we all forgot about it. These are examples out of Mexico. You see that this wall here is not built out of cement, not concrete, no steel, no glass. It is built out of earth. You take the earth, you put it into a foam work here. You have a rammer and you ram the earth so it gets hard. And these walls are as durable, they are as compressive uh, strength compatible as any concrete wall. The material is Ethiopian material. The material, the workers are Ethiopian workers. And the site right now is our institute down at the South Campus. And we're building these test houses right now that you see already the first level. We're building these test houses to show to also our investors and our community that we can do these buildings without importing any materials. Instead of using asphalt, we use stones from Tigray. And we, we educate right now people to do these couple stone things, right? It's great because rainwater can still go inside. No asphalt, no oil imported, all natural Ethiopian materials. We, we, we teach people how to produce also loam blocks, so stones out of loam. This is a press, which we right now built as well. We imported the first one, and we show people how to build more of these presses and use the loam stones for production and in the end for constructions. And then we have a, a partner in Switzerland, in Zurich. His name is Philip Block. And he showed us how we can build huge vaulting systems, ceilings, out also of these tiles, loam tiles. This is an example out of New York. And we brought this, um, we brought this idea back to Ethiopia. This is a project done in South Africa. You see these vaulting techniques, all natural materials. And we started doing research, basic research at our institute to teach these technologies and use natural stone from Ethiopia, you see it here, to build new ceilings, new vault ceilings, which do not need any cement. They do not need any um, foam work, so no wood is, is required underneath these ceilings to make sure that the ceiling is kept upright. And you can build them more or less out in space. The way you do it, you have a so-called plaster of Paris, a material which is uh, produced here in Ethiopia, which is exported also from Ethiopia. You have a shape of that world, which is kind of found into a round shape, as this one that we are standing in right now, a very stable force. And these forces are running exactly the way they would like to go to. Therefore, you see also these string lines here, these string guides. You just take this plaster, you take a stone, and you glue it almost like yuhu. You glue one stone to the other in space, forming this vaulting technique. It does not require any additional support. You see here the vault. And you see here Lara, one of our uh, partners from the ETH in Zurich, uh, sitting on a test vault, which is only three centimeters high. She can stand on there. We actually had like up to five people standing on a small vault like that. Very stable and built for hundreds of years world right around. Um, and we want to promote this technology back to Ethiopia. And we also got right now, here you see the, the world going on in the ceiling. Uh, we taught a lot of these people and we have more commissions going on right now. Uh, we had published a, a couple of articles about that. And um, right now we have clients lined up that we kind of promote this technology here in Addis Ababa. We have a commission right now to build 26 of those houses uh, next to the slaughtery house here in Addis Ababa. Next project I want to show, natural materials, is bamboo. Bamboo is of those natural materials which grow in the south, uh, on also the highlands, uh, in huge amounts. Right now, the estimation is that more than 10 million square meters of bamboo forests 
are here in Ethiopia, not forested, not used for building construction. And we built testing areas uh, with uh, one of my colleagues, Karsten Schlesier, at the Institute, uh, to show to the public how bamboo can be used as a shelter. And we got the commission to build the National Ethiopian Pavilion for the city stay in Awasa, like three weeks ago. That was the design that was done. This was the rendering on top, the architect's plan, and the final pavilion, which was constructed in only three days with local labors, which never ever before built a house. It just, just needed a little kind of guidance from our side. And in three days, for a square meter price, price less than 1,000 bill per square meter, we could erect this pavilion. Diameter approximately 14 meters. The height was around four and a half meters. Here images, we used the roof construction out of textiles. You know, the textile industry is one of the biggest booming right now in Ethiopia, so we coped up with the textile industry. They helped us to create this roof. That's the interior shot. That's the roof in construction and the structure of the bamboo on top here right now. All made in Ethiopia. And guys, we can export that, right? So I think architecture and design and engineering can cope up with the idea that we can reduce our import and kind of turn it upside down. Then when we talk about, and this is, I'm sorry, in German, but last time that we flew back from uh, Switzerland here to Ethiopia, I read in the airplane this article. And this article says that right now in Germany, 14%, 1,4% of the national growth market in Germany is produced by trash by recycling and upcycling trash. And I thought this is fantastic. I think why don't we, as also here in Ethiopia, start to think that instead of a, a system which is a linear system that we have basically food, energy, goods and inputs, oil, coal, going into a city and the end producing trash out of that, why don't we start to think as architects and designers that we can use ha at least half of it into a circle and bringing it back to the city and reduce the output of the city in general. And we start to think about that in the slogan, mine the city. So what I mean by that, I have here an example. Uh, we had a show called the Urban Laboratory Ethiopia approximately one year ago. And this was a show which was uh, commissioned by the Swiss government. And the first time I was here in Ethiopia, I realized that these shipping containers, right? I talked about that a lot of goods are coming into Ethiopia and only a few going out. That means a lot of these shipping containers, they're left here in Ethiopia. And these are examples, maybe you know that here and others, uh, where people start to use these containers to build houses. And I thought this is a clever idea, right? Because it's structurally safe, it has a lot of space, it is already available here, people can work with metals, no problem. So we started to uh, design and we, we actually had some of them at our campus, at the south uh, campus of Addis Ababa University. So we rescued them and we put them together as an exhibition hall for the show of urban laboratory. We cut out pieces, right? So we have a bigger space in between. You see the welders here, we put them together, six of them, uh, you know, urban laboratory. The guy is still welding while we exhibit all the models of the city. I think that's a laboratory where we work together. And in the end, we opened this uh, exhibition building made out of recycled material, again, here in Ethiopia, with local workforce, with local materials available, stuff which otherwise could stand right now still in the forest and rusting. These are the interiors of the space. We use it right now as an exhibition hall. And the, the community, the student community, is also using in the evenings for events, for get-togethers. Uh, right now, we are actually in negotiation to turn it into a so-called IHA. Um, thing. So, I want to promote the idea that we can do things here in Ethiopia with the right education, right? That we are not dependent anymore on the idea that everything has to come from outside into Ethiopia. We can do it our own, we should do it our own, and I think there are endless possibilities to do it as I showed with the rammed earth technology or with the slogan, mine the city. So, thank you very much.